Let's start off with a Southeast DC where at least half a dozen agencies have come together to look for the wild turkey that's been attacking people in the district, but was last seen crossing the border into Maryland. Can you help? I'm, I'm coming now, I'm coming. This turkey really crossed the border. Like, yeah, you got no jurisdiction here. No wonder they can't catch him. Thug turkey is smart. They do say work smarter, not harder. This turkey has made six agencies. One, two, three, four, five, six look like Wiley e. Coyote trying to catch it, making grown adults feel helpless and outmatched. Now, I hope they find Thug Turkey soon and get him some court ordered anger management because this bird has gone berserk. Let's head over to RFK Stadium for this next story. Speaking of berserk, where the sounds from an EDM festival called Project Glow caused people all over the area to complain as they could be heard from as far as three miles away. You hear a booming sound last night? Yes, it wasn't an earthquake. It was a music festival at RFK Stadium. My house was shaking. Was it? Yeah. That about is, a mile away. That's so crazy. I was looking on Twitter because I could see people complaining yeah. about it. And normally something like a Glow Festival wouldn't be a big deal. But this, this Project one? Glow Fest did draw a lot of complaints because people living in D.C., Virginia, and Maryland said they could hear and, as you said, feel <laughs> the pulsating yeah. beats. Uh, the Glow Festival, now the second worst glow right behind Glow Sticks. Now, it could have been worse. It could have been Kid Rock or your cousin's mixtape. I need to know how the festival attendees aren't deaf at this point. Project Glow Festival was knocking pictures off the wall like a rapper from Houston. It actually turns out this happened thanks to the weather on Sunday night. <laughs> on normal nights, temperatures get cooler with height, right? But last night we had a temperature inversion, meaning there was a thin layer of air that was warmer than the temperatures at the surface. And that warm layer of air actually bends sound waves back towards the surface, amplifying that sound and keeping apparently a lot of us awake last night. Wow, I didn't even know that was possible. Next time I have a show and I don't do good, I'm blaming the weather. I, it clearly, clearly there's some there there. And there you have it. All those angry tweets should have actually been aimed at Mother Nature, not the festival organizers. But then again, I quickly learned when I saw Mother Nature's Twitter feed, she don't take no stuff. I picked this story out of Berlin, Maryland, because the animal kingdom has been on one lately. A wild Assateague Island horse named Chip was removed from the island after it became aggressive and attacked park visitors because it had become conditioned to human food. Now, I mean human food as in like actual food, not like humans as food, because this would be a totally different story if that were the case, and I wouldn't be nearly as sensitive to Chip's plight. But right now, I'm on Chip's side. You can't give Chip delicious people snacks and then have him go back to grass and hay and expect him to be happy about it. Chip was running up to tourists like a prison bully talking about, you gonna eat your cornbread. And I can't blame him. So now Chip will be permanently relocated to the Cleveland Amory Black Beauty Ranch in Murchison, Texas, which is a renowned wildlife sanctuary, all because tourists were feeding him or storing food improperly. This is on y'all. The moral of the story is obey the park rules at Assateague Island. Obey the park rules at every island. Y'all got Chip in trouble. Don't do that to any more of my people. Well, you know, and by that I mean my horses. And Chip, if you're watching, good luck reacclimating to regular horse food with no seasoning. It can be done. Many a human has achieved it in the name of love. Thoughts and prayers, my equestrian friend. Let's take a trip to, I ain't naming names. Let's take a trip to Alabama for this last story. A corrections official named Vicki White, don't get me in trouble, who was last seen taking inmate Casey White for a mental health evaluation. Now she has a warrant out for her arrest on charges of permitting or facilitating escape in the first degree. Now this sounds like the plot to Raising Arizona, but you know, like the wish.com version. Raising West Virginia, raising Arkansas. Maybe raising Gary, Indiana. The sheriff says since Vicki White is in charge of the detention center, no one questioned her. Investigators say they still have no evidence of a relationship between them. We're still looking into that, reviewing phone calls, reviewing uh, video from the jail. Now that was my theory. Casey White looks like he would try to sweet talk a woman into ruining her life. He looks like Aaron Rodgers if he were bad at football, but really good at narcotics. These two will inevitably get caught. This is a harebrained scheme. 
Even by Alabama standards, the world is digital now. It's increasingly harder to live off the grid, and you just know they're going to get found out in a goofy way, like using a public library computer to check their Twitter mentions, and that is a best-case scenario for what they were using the public library for. My favorite story, you know it's got to be my man, Chip. You know how I feel. Reese loves the animals. Shout out to you, Chip, the horse that likes the same food as people, because once you eat Popeye's, there's no looking back. Just ask those rats in Eastern Market.